My friends, it just keeps happening. And by it, I mean we're looking at more weird places and liminal spaces in GoldenEye 007 today, enhanced by the more clear resolution and video footage enabled by the Xbox and Switch re-releases. It's true, it's beautiful, it's strange, and I always enjoy looking at some interesting things that I missed while looking at the floor speedrunning for the past 17 years. And it seems many of you enjoyed my first look at these places in my first video on the topic, which was a pleasant surprise. So here we go again, five new places and stages today in higher and prettier resolution. Now in a video like this, once again I have to acknowledge the creators that inspired me with this sort of content, in particular, Any Austin, Luigi Bros, and Sir Ket, just appreciating the lesser seen things in your favorite 90s video games, and the strange spaces that make up so much of these early 3D worlds, unique to this era of gaming, when the developers hadn't optimized and streamlined the creation of these worlds and games just yet, which as a result left so much soul in the game. And the last place we'll look at in this video, I genuinely did not know about until making this video and checking out some places, even though it's one of the levels I've spent hundreds of hours in, in Goldeneye. So you want to see that. Alright, with all that, here we go. Here we go! But first, my friends, a thanks to the good folks at Manscaped, the global men's lifestyle brand that's disrupting the beard market. It's time to throw away that bulky beard trimmer you've been using for years that has dull blades, 10 useless guard attachments, and a bulky power cord. It's time to upgrade to the new Manscaped Beard Hedger Trimmer and level up your beard game. I'm excited to be one of the first to take a sneak peek at the Beard Hedger by Manscaped, so let's check it out. The powerful 7200 RPM motor and titanium coated T-blade can cut through the thickest of hair in a single stroke. Whether you prefer a 5 o'clock shadow or a tame lion's mane, you can choose from 20 different hair cutting lengths with the zoom wheel that uses only one guard. That's right, there's only one guard needed for 20 different hair lengths. You can finally ditch all those useless guard attachments that clutter your bathroom drawers. This beard trimmer is waterproof, cordless, and rechargeable, so you can trim in the shower to save time and create less mess. That's pretty insane. It gets up to 60 minutes of runtime and has a three level power indicator that tells you when it needs to recharge. So go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free shipping when you use my promo code GooseGamer at checkout. That's 20% off plus free international shipping with promo code GooseGamer at manscaped.com. Join over 8 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped today. So the first place I wanted to look at tonight, can you guess, is the bottom of the dam. The final room in the bottom of the dam where there's an objective to get the data upload to your, you know, Q branch. He wants the information. Now I have invisibility on so the guards, that guard can't see me, but I want to leave him alive because I think he's kind of interesting. Normally you come in here and there are three extra guards plus him so there's four total and yet just a room that you don't really appreciate much because when you're speed running you just kind of run in you press me at the console you leave as fast as you possibly can because there's you know four guards shooting at you on a double agent level but it's really quite an odd and unusual room you know for one you really have this sort of liminal space type of hallway and those are sort of the definitive liminal spaces, you know, hallways especially because they're the kind of places where you pass from one location to another. The sort of definition of liminality. And so it's, especially with the door closed, like when you're speedrunning, you just run in and out. But with the door closed, it looks even odder because you, you will always get out before the door naturally closes. You know, this door actually stays open for a good while. And you know, like this view, once you get into the red light texture, it's definitely very interesting and unusual. 
But I especially love too how there's this sort of kind of repressed area here in this hallway. You know, you can imagine this was designed for water to kind of spill through here. It is the bottom of a dam after all, so it probably gets a bit moist. And so you want that water runoff to be drained somewhere. Even this view in particular, like, kind of is a bit Zelda-like. You know, you would be hard-pressed to be certain that this is Goldeneye from this shot here, I would say. But it's kind of really cute and intricate detail to make this little kind of repression in the floor here. You know, it's good architecture. And then, you know, there's four computer consoles here, which there's one for each guard who hangs out here, which is kind of interesting. You know, I can't imagine all four of them studiously working away here, you know, like something like out of the office or, or fight club or office space. You know, it's kind of funny to imagine such a thing. But I guess that's the point behind the design of there being four desks and stations. And I find this guy kind of interesting because he's just kind of chilling way back here. Like, I don't even think he really sees you when you come in, you know, speedrunning and you just bump this mainframe and leave. It's the other three guys who come after you. You kind of really have to start, if you're, if you're playing kind of casually and you're shooting, you know, from here, kind of taking cover, he'll come out and, and uh, fight you. But he's kind of in a weird spot. And then another thing that's really interesting about this room is just the lighting, you know, the, the light pouring in from above here. This is kind of more common in Perfect Dark, these sort of lighting flows, and you, know, you can shoot at the lights in that game and darken rooms and stuff. But it's not very common in Goldeneye to have a room, you know, light flooding into a room from somewhere else. And so I wonder if it's something that the Rare guys liked designing, and just it was like a tough thing to always include everywhere, and it was a bit resource intensive, and so they eventually opted against it. But it's really cool to see it here on the first level dam. And you can even see the sort of um, 16 squares of the window frame, which matches up here. And I believe this is actually just a vent. It's not like a glass window, so you can't break it. Now, if you could, presumably the shadow wouldn't change. I think that is the case on some other levels. But here, hey, it all works out. Up here is where the covered modem is. You know, if, you can actually throw it from here up. It's it's a tough throw, but you can do it. Um, however, on the contrary, stuff doesn't get thrown down here. Like if you throw a mine from above, it just kind of gets stuck on the vent. It won't pass through, but stuff definitely does pass through on the way up. I already planted a covered modem. I put on infinite ammo as well, but you can see like it passes straight up and it falls onto the floor or the wall or even the, the screen that it needs... Oh, you can just barely see the satellite dish there. That's pretty cool. You can barely see a little tip of it in there, which is nice. And yeah, one thing I want to try here was this kind of interesting thing where there are these two mainframes, but you only need one of them to remain intact to get the data uploaded. So the objective didn't fail. You only need one of the two. It doesn't matter which one, I think. Either one works. There you go. Off-site data backup completed. And so, yeah, it's just a cool room that I feel gets like underappreciated and we don't really look at it too much in the game of Goldeneye. And I especially like looking at it now, you know, in the higher resolution here on Xbox or Nintendo Switch. It makes it you know, just a bit more crisp and appealing, and you can really take it in more. Now, Runway is a really interesting one because it really acts funky when you pull the sniper rifle. And you'll very quickly get a feel for what I'm talking about here. So if you take the sniper, again, I have invisibility on, so these guards can't see me. But if you start aiming and zooming at the roof of the facility, it really gets strange quickly, especially when you're zoomed all the way in. So here, here's what I'm talking about. I'm standing here, 
I'm going to zoom in, and this actually makes it more interesting on the Xbox version. But I'm going to zoom, I'm looking at the top of this building, and I'm still looking there. I'm going to still aim there, still aim there, still aim there. And I'm actually moving towards the building. Look, see how it faded out of existence? Slowly zooming in and out, it just sort of shoots in and out of existence. And kind of, this big metal sheet tries to cover up what you're seeing, you know? It's very strange. This angle here by the tank is a good one because you can really imagine that sort of being the core of the facility where you just wreaked a bunch of havoc. And it's like the closer you get and the more you zoom in, the more things start, sh see, the metal sheet comes for you all. It's like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Then it gets to a point where you're zoomed in and it just starts shooting up. And it like, you can see there's the bottom of the facility texture sort of like jumping up. It like doesn't really allow you to zoom in well. And see, look there, it looks like we should be shooting through the building into the void. And yet our shots are making contact with the sheet. So that zoom on the facility from the runway is just very odd how it all works like that. It's just so weird. And yeah, here, look how, look how weird that is, right? When I'm far away and I zoom in, all of a sudden, like, what is going on there? You gotta kind of keep your distance and back up when you're really getting in that weird spot. But yeah, I mean, look at this. This is just so, so unusual, so strange. Um, what more can you say? You can even see, like, the door is above where it should be. You can see the threshold of the door, and you can see above it is the physical door flashing in and out of existence. You know, I'm going to walk forward with the zoomer on, and the door slowly falls down into place. Like, that is just so weird, and... I mean, it's all just a weird optical illusion, or, you know... Kind of. I mean, like, the runway looks separated here. Like, what exactly is going on? You, there's the plane. See, look at this guard, like, suspended. And as I slowly move up with my aimer, he floats back down. And now he's just shooting up into the sky. I'm zoomed all the way in here, by the way. I mean, play around with this yourself because it's so weird and there's probably no end at strange things to see. I mean, look, the door's shooting up. Like, what is going on? And then, next thing I know, when I release the, the R-aimer, I'm at the door. I mean, there's a lot more I want to get to on runway. So I don't want to get caught up on this area too much. But I do really appreciate how there's this area behind the hut, as we call it. We call this, like, the key hut. You know, you kind of wonder what's out here. It's been a long time since I've looked out here. You know, but you wonder, oh, is there a way to clip out or glitch out? And as far as I know, as I know, there is not. And even so, on the other side of this hut, same thing. You get this whole kind of wall where there's nothing going on. You're bound in here. You can't get to the other side. And so that's kind of cool. But here's where runway gets really, really unusual, okay? Like, these are clearly some kind of, like, propane tank storage or something. Fair enough. But there are these doors here on each side of the runway. A lot of people have mentioned these to me in previous videos in a similar topic. Now, you can't even press B at this door. It doesn't even show up, like, doors locked, door whatever. It's almost as if the door doesn't exist. And the same goes... Oh, I thought there was one over here, but there isn't. Okay, fair enough. I really did. Now, I'm wondering how this door acts when I pull out the sniper on it. And so the door kind of doesn't seem to flash up and down, you know, from within the wall. It doesn't seem to act the same way that the other door did to the key hut. It seems to be really embedded in the wall. And we just see the guard is the one who is jumping up, you know. The guard's behavior is consistent from what we've seen, but the door, it acts like a different door. And so it's definitely a very unusual door. I don't really have any explanation for it. I do wonder 
you know, there is this game chart code, destroy everything, which allows you to destroy, you know, doors. <laughs> I don't know if it would destroy that one. And obviously I don't have Game Shark on the Xbox at this point in time, but maybe someday we'll try it. Now the last thing I want to appreciate here on Runway is just kind of the tail end of the runway, because you usually don't get all the way back here. You know, even though there are two drones that you need to blow up, you're usually shooting at them from the tank, you know, further into the runway. You know, you're way down there, you're blasting those tank shells, and it's all good and dandy. You usually don't come all the way down here. But it is just kind of interesting to get to the back end of the runway. You know, it's this kind of flat cutout into this void abyss. You know, here it's kind of covered up, but on, on this side you can kind of see deeper into the abyss. Oh, and you can see it's actually solid down there, which is interesting. Obviously, it kind of is a bit, like, unfinished in a way, you know? Like, there's just a black void down here, rather than any texture. And you can see the shots are landing on it. I also kind of find it funny how, like, this mountain is really not that far away, and so, like, for a runway, it feels like you're gonna, you know, not have a successful takeoff, is what I'll say. Which wouldn't be pleasant. But hey, you do manage, in the cutscene, you do manage to get the plane to take off and, and overshoot the mountains. But, like, this little notch area is so kind of interesting, too. It's like, you know, you can't go down here, you can't clip down. But you're kind of in this area that there's no need to go. It's not very well traveled. And I just think it's really interesting and cool. Let's end on runway with this funny old trick. Where if you put timed mines on the plane, well, you can imagine what happens in the cutscene. So let's do it. Wow, it's amazing. You kind of leave the explosions behind, which is funny. Now, there are so many places we could possibly look at here. It's endless. But I really want to look at the ending of caverns in the radio room. There's a very particular angle or thing that we don't really see often. So let's go take a look. Okay, so on this catwalk, this object is really strange. I'm not even sure what it's supposed to be. Like, I truly don't know. There's a cutscene where you see it. It was some sort of water tower or drainage pipe or something. Maybe a structural pillar, but it's not really clear exactly what it is. I mean, you can imagine if it wasn't there, this area would just look so blank and void. So it kind of makes sense why they put something there. You know, maybe they could have put vents or something, but then maybe that would have blocked the opening cutscene. Yeah, it's just kind of interesting. But that isn't what I had in mind to come check out on the stage. So this room here is called the radio room, because of course there is the radio that you contact Jack Wade with. And of course, when you're speedrunning, it's truly insane. You come in through here, and you have to hope that, you know, these three guards over here don't bother you too much. This one has an RCP-90, which has two bars of damage on Double O Agent. Um, all of these guards, or at least two of them, have RCP-90s, which do two bars of damage, and you run right through and press B. You have to hope you can get that B press off before everything blows up which is precarious to say the least. The scientists can fail. This guy over here is an AR-33, which is a bar and a half of damage. There's just so much that can go wrong. These guards love pulling nades. It's chaos. The radio room is pure, pure chaos. And so we usually only dip in and out of here. However, over here is very interesting. For one, there is this hidden box you know, this nesting box with um, these monitors, and from it you get double AR-33, which is cool. 
But even cooler, in my opinion, is if you break this glass, you get to see this strange structure over here. Now, what is this strange structure going over this water? Well, it is the tunnel you run through at the end of the mission, believe it or not. You know, Trevelyan usually is awaiting you in here on a traditional playthrough of the level. Of course, speedrunning it, we beat him there, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. There's a drone or two in here, depending on difficulty. And that's what that tunnel is. And it's interesting because, like, when you're crossing it, and if you don't blow up these windows, there's, like, no indication that you're, like, on a bridge, essentially, running over water, you know? It feels as though you're in indoors. You're still in this enclosed area, but it's very clear that you're in here. You get in that final room, you take the elevator up, and then you go battle it out on Cradle. And so this caverns must sort of be, you know, underneath the antenna cradle, I suppose, at the Arecibo, you know, observatory. And yeah, this structure over here is just so interesting. And it's cool that you see it, you know? It's cool that they put it in there, the glass is breakable, and you can actually envision this area going towards the end. So if we come in through this side with the door open, we can see, you know, here is that bridge to the end. And if we just come around this way and go in here, you know, there it is. And yeah, when you're crossing it from here, there's like no indication that you are crossing water, you know? It feels like you're inside. Yet, you can kind of see this small sort of circular-ish room is definitely that room we saw at the end, you know, at the end of the bridge there. So I find that little tidbit very interesting. So I want to check out some stuff on archives. And I was actually going to leave this first room and go out elsewhere, but I noticed that you can actually kind of get this peek behind this wall here. This brick wall outside, you can imagine you're in some sort of building in St. Petersburg. And the idea is that, you know, you got to escape into the streets. I have invisibility on, so this guard usually comes in and says a, a text line to, to, you know, shoot you and then, you know, things progress. But anyways, he just left. I find it interesting how you can kind of see the sky from this room. You know, there's some sort of building to your left, but it doesn't, it's not too huge of a building. And so you can see on either side of it. And it's cool how the wall is solid. You know, that's really interesting. And I kind of wonder if they wanted it to be like that, because this window doesn't get blown out. I mean, you can't destroy this window. And so I wonder, you know, because I guess all you would see is the sky texture in the building, and that would kind of make it almost more realistic. So you kind of wonder why this is the case here. Then, you know, in this room, we get these poles with bullet holes, and, you know, it's obvious that... In the in-game lore, this is where they bring spies like Bond to be passed away. But as a kid, I had no idea. I thought this was like, you know, a, sh a shooting range or, you know, shooting practice or something. So it's funny when you're a kid and, you know, of a much more innocent mind. Alas, my friends, this is the life we live. Now, there's something kind of funny in the archives, and people who played a lot of multiplayer will definitely know of this. But I feel like a lot of, like, speedrunners today don't know. And it's that there's these whole, like, areas, these whole secret passageways. There's one over here. And this one goes this way, where you get blocked in by boxes that you have to destroy. But yeah, it's a, definitely a secret passageway. And then, on this side of the same area, you get the same thing. And you can kind of see, like, you can see the seam there. 
where it comes to be opened. And so, yeah, it's just a, a cool little passageway that a lot of people don't know about, don't ever go down. Here's a good sort of, you know, liminal view down the hallway. There's nothing in the hallway. It's just a, a passage from one place to another. And there's the liminality to it. There's also this old legend, and I believe this to be apocryphal. But, you know, one of the first speedrun champions of GoldenEye was this guy named Sterling Neblet. And he can be a bit uh, of an is eccentric character. I mean, certainly I can myself, and you know, many of us online can be. But Sterling would often bring up the OG Archives route, which he purported was an early way to beat the level. Uh, in early, early speedruns, we're talking late 90s here. And it sounds almost like he was describing going down here. Now, of course, this, like, intuitively is no nowhere near as fast because... You know, these doors that you just go through to beat the level are, are fast to open, whereas this one, like, takes, like, a second to open, and then, again, this one would be closed. It would take another second to open. And so we kind of wonder, what's this arcane, you know, mystical knowledge of Sterling's OG Archives route, or the Ogar route? And it's kind of become a meme among GoldenEye speedrunners. It's kind of a funny thing, but... You know, makes you wonder. There's there's no video footage of early world records that exists showing anyone using this purported Ogar route. So whether, you know, he's describing something else or he, you know, his memory is just a little bit misplaced or whatever the case may be. It is fun to imagine a world where the secret passageway would be the world record route. If even at the very earliest days of the game's history. Alas, that is not the case. And, you know, you just run through the level on the most intuitively fast paths most of the time. I'm going to check out those maps down there. I don't believe we have, like, a high enough resolution to really see what they are, but I've never really looked at them, you know? I mean, this one on the left is definitely Europe. And you can see Norway on the left in red. You can see the Italy, the boot of Italy there, and going into the, the USSR. And actually looks, this map actually looks like it is showing, you know, the Eastern Bloc and sort of the Berlin Wall. You know, this game is, takes place just after the end of the Cold War. You know, that kind of purple on the left and red on the right looks similar, if not exactly, like a map of the Eastern Bloc and, and uh, countries. And then here, oh, I think that whole green mass is Russia, you know, or USSR. And... The red on the left is Europe? I believe so, and with a, an interesting projection of the Earth, not the Mercator, I don't believe. But that's kind of cool, you know, it's, it's just these things that we don't really look at much, and on the N64, it would be, you know, it's already low res as is, and on the N64 it would be even lower res, so it's kind of cool to just finally sort of take a look and appreciate it now. We see here is this interesting gentleman here, kind of looks a bit like Santa Claus. There's actually a whole bunch of posters and paintings in the archives. You know, maybe I'll go through them uh, in another video, really get to all of them. But uh, I think that's all the archives exploring will do for now. Alright, this one I want to show, I only came across it at the tail end of kind of looking around. And you know, on streets, playing for, you know, 112 in Secret and Double Asian on Tides, you, you run out of here and you run this way, either down here or up here. And you never really stop to look over here. And I found something that I, I just could not believe. You know, even the tank we don't really use in speedruns, I kind of wish we did. I've taken like a second look at it a couple times. Like it's actually, almost faster you know you don't have to strafe in it it just it just drives and it's it almost makes up for the speed that you lose you know you lose some time strafing from here to the tank and then going and it almost makes up for it and it's almost worth it and so one day i dream we can get the tank in a speed run like who knows but here's the thing i didn't know it's like if you stand on top of the tank and look this way there's this whole weird area that I just never looked at in my life playing this game. And like, I just couldn't believe there's this grassy 
area behind this fence. You know, I've decided to call it the Noli Bush area. You know, it's a bit of an homage. I mean, look, you, you park the tank over here and it's just so weird. Like, I'm I'm just stunned and amazed. You know, would you know where this this is if if we didn't tell you? You know, I actually posted a screenshot of this to a couple of the GoldenEye runners and their first instinct was that it was on Statue and then Depot and it's like they're close, you know, because this is all part of one mission on St. Petersburg. But like, very few people knew that this was on streets. And one of the more amazing things is like, it's actually solid ground. We can see the paintballs hitting it. You know, the, the tree line is not solid, but the rest of it is. And so it's like, in theory, you could probably go and hang out there and walk around, which is just amazing. You know, if I, if I chuck some GLs out there, they'll land and make explosions. And you can kind of see it's quite a large area. Like, it's, you know, it's hard to get a, a good gauge of feet or meters in this game. But, I mean, look, it's crazy. I tried a bit to, like, boost myself in and over it. it just, I didn't have any luck. And I tried to kind of attract guards and see if I could stand on their head and get over in here. But I didn't have any luck either. And that's unfortunate because I would love to go in there and explore more. You know, maybe there's some sort of Game Shark no clipping code that someone can come up with. But um, until then, I just I'm on the outside looking in with this location. And it's just amazing how I haven't even seen this referenced in like any old blog posts or any Death Star archived page or anything like that. I've never seen this before, never seen it referenced, and it's just so weird and unusual to me. I love it, and I just had to throw this in here at the end of this. So, there were some more weird places and liminal spaces in GoldenEye 007. I hope you enjoyed this enhanced look at some of my favorite places, places of note, and lesser seen things in this 3D world I've spent so much time in over the last two decades. Like I opened with, I want to acknowledge other creators who have made similar content and inspired me, and I certainly don't want to step on their territory doing games they tend to cover in this context, like the Zeldas or Marios. But if you enjoy this content and would like to see me explore other stages in GoldenEye or maybe Perfect Dark, let me know. Because these sorts of videos are really an enjoyable time to create, and I often find something that I genuinely didn't know about while doing it. I mean, even the thought of starting up The World Is Not Enough crossed my mind, since I feel like that game has some strange places, so who knows. Check out Speedlore on Patreon if you would like to support my work. I actually recorded a segment for Egypt in this video, but it turned out kind of weird, so I posted it on Patreon as an exclusive video. You can check that out there. Plus, there will be a DLTK Speedlore episode coming before March as well. I think this will be the last Goldmine video I make for a little while after grinding it out through February in honor of the re-release, so a huge thanks to everyone for watching, enjoying, and relishing in the revitalization of Goldeneye 007. There are some Pokemon Snap updates I want to get to, and you know, the other games I also tend to cover and enjoy. So subscribe for all that good stuff, stay true my friends, and I'll see you in the next stream or video.